do some kind of preaching work. Everyone can do take whatever skills they have. You know, Krishna really set me up. He gave me skills in music, in writing, in public speaking and performance. You know, just like everything that I would need to do this work. You know, but some other people, other devotees, may not have the same kind of qualification. That's all right. You can still preach. You can preach through whatever kind of work you do. See, if you do your work very nicely as an offering to Krishna, that's preaching. Krishna says, whatever you do, whatever you eat, uh, whatever you take, whatever whatever kind of uh, things you buy, whatever you wear, everything should be an offering unto me. And if you do like that, you see, Krishna reciprocates. Mm. Well, one more. <laughs> In Vishnu Sahasranam, the end section is called Palasruti. Pala means results. You know, so it's like, here are the results. <laughs> if you chant these thousand names of Vishnu, and then it lists so many things, well, you get prosperity, you get health, you get release from any problems or limitations in your life, you, you become the most prominent of, of all your family members, you, um, any disease that you have is removed. <laughs> it goes on and on and on like this. And then finally it says, and you attain the supreme auspiciousness, of love of Godhead. Right? And my experience in chanting Vishnu Sahasranam is this is exactly correct. So if you have any problem, any material problem whatsoever, you chant Vishnu Sahasranam, or at least hear it. We have a nice recording you can download from the website. Then you can you can take it from me, because right? it's not like I never had a problem in my life. I had so many problems. But Krishna solved them all, one by one, because I chanted Vishnu Sahasranam every single day for 12 years, continuously. That was my vow. And because I did that, everything's auspicious. So Krishna is very nice. Number nine, pleasing talk. A person who can speak sweetly, even with his enemy, just to pacify him, is called a pleasing talker. Krishna was such a pleasing talker that after defeating his enemy Kaliya in the water of the Jamuna, he said, My dear king of the snakes, although I have given you so much pain, please do not be dissatisfied with me. It is my duty to protect these cows, which are worshipped even by the demigods. Only in order to save them from the danger of your presence have I been obliged to banish you from this place. Kaliya was residing within the water of the Jamuna, and as a result, the back portion of that river had become poisoned. Thus, so many cows who had drunk that water had died. Therefore, Krishna, even though he was only four or five years old, dipped himself into the water, punished Kaliya very severely, and then asked him to leave the place and go elsewhere. There's a, a story that uh, he went to Fiji. Yeah, he went to the Fiji island. <coughs> Krishna said at that time that the cows are worshipped even by the demigods. And he practically protected, I'm uh, sorry, he practically demonstrated how to protect the cows. At least people who are in Krishna consciousness should follow in his footsteps and give all protection to the cows. Cows are worshipped not only by the demigods. Krishna himself worshipped the cows on several occasions, especially on the days of Gopashtami and Govardhan Puja. Yeah, so if Krishna is worshipping the cows, go to speak with us. This is what we want to do. We want to go to India. And we want to study this wonderful Indian culture, music and dancing and drama and like that. And uh, while we're doing that, we also want to establish a uh, goshala. Goshala means shelter for cows. So uh, the nice thing about it is you can do it with very little land. You know, if you if you want to make a farm and feed people, you have to buy a lot of land. But we don't have so much money. So what we can do is buy a small 
piece of land, you know, one or two acres, and several cows. And then we can also uh, stockpile some food and start a nice prashadam distribution program so that the, the poor people in the village, wherever we're staying, you know, in, there's places in India, in South India especially, like up in the mountains in Kerala, places like that, where people live just the way they have lived for thousands of years. They don't have TV, they don't have radio, internet, or any of that stuff. In many places, they don't even have cars. Maybe once or twice a day, a bus will come to the village. That's how they go travel around. You know, we've seen many places like this in India. So uh, if we go to a place like that, we can easily get help for taking care of the cows and, and like that. And, and then we can uh, continue to study. Um, we'll have to make internet connections somehow. I don't know how we can solve that problem. We'll figure it out though. Because we're, we're depending on the internet right now for all of our preaching work. So maybe we have a place in town <coughs> And then we have a place out in the village somewhere where the milk is uh, produced and like that. And then we have a, a prashadam program. So uh, we want to do like that. And then through prashadam, of course, people will become nice devotees. Uh, because if, if a person is eating something that's contaminated, uh, then their consciousness is also contaminated. You know, the saying is, you are what you eat, right? Yeah. So uh, if you eat nonsense food not offered to Krishna, Krishna says you're eating only sin. And how can a person who's sinful be happy? So it's pretty plain, pretty obvious that uh, if we distribute large amount of prasada to all the people in the village, then that whole village will become very nice. And Prabhupada used to say, we become just like Vaikuntha. <laughs> <laughs> So we want to live in Vaikuntha. Uh, and uh, take it from me, if you serve Krishna like this, then you'll be in Vaikuntha everywhere you go. So one or two more. What time is it? 7.43. Oh, it's getting late. So one or two more. Number 10 is fluent. A person who can speak meaningful words and with all politeness and good qualities is called vavaduka, or fluent. There is a nice statement in Srimad Bhagavatam regarding Krishna speaking politely. When Krishna politely bade his father, Nanda Maharaj, to stop the ritualistic offering of sacrifice to the rain god, Indra, a wife of one village cowherd man became captivated. She later thus described the speaking of Krishna to her friends. Krishna was speaking to his father so politely and gently that it was as if he were pouring nectar into the ears of all present there. After hearing such sweet words from Krishna, who will not be attracted to him? Krishna's speech, which contains all good qualities in the universe, is described in the following statement by Uddhava. The words of Krishna are so attractive that they can immediately change the heart of even his opponent. His words can immediately solve all of the questions and problems of the world. Although he does not speak very long, each and every word from his mouth contains volumes of meaning. These speeches of Krishna are very pleasing to me. <laughs> who, could, who could say it better than Uddhava? So we'll continue with uh, Krishna's qualities next time. I think we're going to be on this chapter for a while. 64 qualities. <laughs> but there's so much you can say about each and every one of them. So many examples. You know? Krishna's mm -hmm. qualities are so profound. And not only that, he has them in unlimited quantity. Not like us. We may have a little good quality here and there, but, you know, there's a limit to it. <laughs> then the bad qualities start. <laughs> but Krishna's good qualities are unlimited. They're like the ocean.
you can't find any end. They just go on and on and more and more. Okay. So we should all hear this nectar of Krishna's words. Krishna is speaking so sweetly and everything he says is so profound, so deep. And also Krishna's devotees, when they speak, it has the same quality because all they speak about is Krishna. So because they, uh, Krishna is residing in their words, their words become just like nectar. And if we hear these words and we allow them to penetrate our heart, then everything becomes auspicious and we get the highest benediction. The process of devotional service begins from this hearing. If we simply hear very nicely, from a qualified, pure devotee, 